25 to 35 percent of all problems with neuropathy come originally from diabetes. Uh, but we're going to also talk a little bit about poor circulation a little, a little later on. So what is neuropathy? Let's just get a quick overview. Uh, degeneration or a dying off of the nerves in the periphery, meaning the foot or toes or fingers. Um, but a lot of people say, well, my nerves are dead. My toes are dead because they feel dead. They are numb, a lot of patients. Well, but they aren't really dead. They're just not working right. The nerves, by the way, are the first things to stop working when circulation in the toes or the fingers gets low. When we have decreased circulation, for whatever reason, then we start having a dying off or a closing down of the capillaries, which are the little teeny, teeny, tiny blood vessels inside all tissue. But what happens is, as we decrease the blood flow, the oxygen goes down. When the oxygen goes down, we have the first things that are going to be affected are the nerves. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, so it causes what? Pain, numbness, tingling, hot or cold feeling, pins and needles, swelling, color changes. Some people tell me, my feet are on fire. Some people have to put their feet in ice at night because there, there's so much heat coming off of them. And other people, on the other hand, have so much cold, if you look at their toes or their fingers, they're actually blue. And if you touch them, they're cold. Okay. Uh, we can also get a redness. And we're going to primarily be talking about feet, but just assume that it's also about fingers because sometimes fingers are affected as well. Uh, we can get a red coloration, a swelling, a heat, a redness in the lower feet and uh, lower um, legs and feet. We can also get what happens is sometimes they turn brown or grayish, and that's where the skin starts discoloring, and it's not the normal color, and so it gets brown or gray and really starts to cause problems. Okay, uh, it can cause balance disorders, balance problems, and gait disorders, meaning people have trouble walking. Okay, anybody here experienced any of those? Any of those at all? How about those of you who are in? How many have we got in the healthcare profession here? Let's just see that first. Okay, a lot of you. Okay, but how many people have you seen with those symptoms? A lot? A lot. Okay, that's important. Okay. Obviously, it changes the quality of life. All right, where does it come from? I say too many calories, not enough insulin, and not enough absorption by the individual cells of the sugar that's in the blood system. Uh, and I say, too much of too much. You know, let's face it. Oh, and genetics. Yeah, that's, that's the one I, I like to say. You know, it was, I'm diabetic, by the way. Uh, it's my mom's fault. She was diabetic, and damn it, she gave it to me. So when I was 50, or 48 or 49, I guess, I was diagnosed with diabetes, and I said to the doctor, who was a friend of mine, I said, he said, you, you, you're diabetic. I said, no, I'm not. He said, Yes, you are. You have all the symptoms. I said, I'm not diabetic. Well, he said, yeah, you are. I said, listen, my mom didn't get it till she was 70. So if I'm going to get it, I'm not getting it till I was 70. By the way, a lot of our patients are the same way. They're in denial. They live in Egypt, and they're living on the river denial. Okay. But listen, seriously, I was in denial. I said, uh, I, you know, and it, it took me two or three years before I actually got the big picture that I was going to die if I didn't do something about it. My son, who is a surgeon, came to me one day and said, he said, uh, Dad, uh, Mom wants me to talk to you. And you know, we don't talk about these things very often because that's our family. And he said, and I don't want to give you a hard time, but she says you're not taking your medication for the diabetes. I said, no, because I don't think I need it. And he said, well, he, and I said, besides, you know, all those, I'm a chiropractor, by the way, so all those drugs will kill you. And he said, well, I got news for you. The diabetes is going to kill you way before the drugs do, so I'd say take the drugs if you want to live. And then uh, a little later on, my, my medical doctor said to me, you're not taking your meds, are you? And I said, no, I'm not. And he said, well, 
he said, you better get your will and all that stuff made because I'll give you two or three years and then you're going to be dead. And you know what? It finally, I finally woke up and said, you know, probably a good idea to start taking care of this. I deal with a lot of people in nursing homes and that and have in, on the south side of Chicago. In a very poor area, okay, very poor. Uh, and by golly, let me tell you something, they're all in denial too, especially the men, okay? So I just like to throw that out that it is a very common factor among patients. Okay, uh, all right, so let's go on. Where does it come from? Too many calories, not enough insulin, high blood sugar. We did this, didn't we? Oh, it's the food of all, I'm sorry. Am I going the wrong way? <laughs> Duh. Still going backwards. Uh oh, my golly. Okay, we're, hey, listen, I can be retrained. I'm an old dog, but I can learn new things, okay? Okay, too much food, alcohol, smoking. Smoking is very effective, all right? A very effective promoter of diabetes is what I meant to say. Uh, overeating, input versus output. You know, that's the same old story. You know, if you eat too much, you're going to have too much sugar in your body. If you, if you burn 2,000 calories a day and you eat 4,000 calories a day, then your body turns your food into blood sugar, and if it's not used, it turns into what? Fat. Exactly right. All, you know, with women, it's kind of all over their body. With men, it's kind of around here. I, used to, I tell people this used to be a six-pack, and now it's a pony keg. All right. Catch up. Catch up. Come on. I used to be a stand-up comedian, but now I'm old. I have to sit down. Uh, so blood sugar is used. We all know how this works, right? The blood sugar circulates your body, your body. Imagine little guys or little gals running around with grocery carts full of packets of blood sugar, okay? They're the batteries of the cells. That they kind of they power the cell. The blood sugar powers the cell. And, um, and then when your cell needs power, it takes on a new battery and it recycles the old one. And, uh, and, and the grocery carts are kind of like insulin. Insulin supplies the, the, the blood sugar to the cell. And I told you I took a little poetic license, so don't kill me here. Okay, but what happens when the cells don't need new batteries? The grocery carts fill up and they have to dump their sugar load into the back into the bloodstream or into something else and it becomes fat. Meanwhile, more food is coming in, more, sh more food and more, uh, so, and, and we have so many grocery carts full of sugar that they start crashing into each other. Now, what happens is the cells in the body uh, uh, start to stick together. The, the fluid in the body, the fluid in the blood gets so sticky, the cells, especially the red cells, start sticking together in strings or in clumps. And uh, pretty soon, there is, the, the, the traffic slows, just like us trying to get here today on the freeway, okay? Too many cars, nobody, we were standing, we were in a parking lot. Okay, of course, that doesn't happen in Chicago. <laughs> okay, so the same thing happens to your, your uh, blood vessels. As your diabetes gets worse over the years, the blood vessels get more and more narrow, small, right? And as more and more, as they get smaller and smaller, Guess what happens? We have less blood flow. That's what we talked about a few minutes ago. Okay. More sugar builds up in the bloodstream. They stick together. We did that one. Okay. Uh, decreased circulation primarily causes decreased oxygen. But it's also what else? Vitamins, minerals, nutrition, right? Okay. So the cells are actually, some of our cells are actually starving because they can't get the nutrition that they need. Kind of odd, huh? All that sugar floating around, but it can't get what it needs. Okay. Now, and that causes what we said before, dying off of nerves. Uh, it can also cause, what happens, by the way, and I think I've got another one here. Some of the first signs that diabetes is, get, diabetes is getting the best of you and starting you on the slippery slope to no return is itching of the lower legs, hands and feet, burning sensations, cold feelings, pins and needles, walking on rocks, a lot of people say, I feel like I'm walking on gravel all the time. I feel like I've got sharp little BBs or something in my shoe. I go to check my shoe, and there's nothing in there. And I say, well, yeah, that's, that's part of it, okay? Uh, toenail discolorations. We see this all the time. Yes, it's a toenail fungus, right? It's a fungus in the toenail. Health people, yeah? But why is there toenail fungus? What isn't the body doing? It's not cleaning out the fungus. It's not fighting the fungus. Why? There's not enough circulation of the good blood down there. 
Okay? Okay, uh, lower leg and foot discoloration. Oh, poor vision. That, I, I kind of ignore this one because we're so focused on the feet, you know. But what's one of the biggest problems with diabetics? Macular degeneration, diabetic eyes, poor vision, very bad stuff, very bad stuff. I said this before, and your patients are going to say this, it can't happen to me. But I got news for you all, it's already happening. You know, even those of you who think it's not happening to you, it's probably happening to you. It's one of, it's the number one fastest growing disorder in this country, okay? And genetically, a lot of us are prone to it. Pretty much everybody, well, I was going to say pretty much everybody in this room, but I, I've, I've obviously been told that you're, <laughs> you're not, so you don't have it. But we know people that have it. Okay, um, the only people who don't really get it are people who eat properly. They don't eat junk food. How many of us don't eat junk food? How many of our patients, okay, one. <laughs> Thank you. Ruined two. Ruined the whole curve. Now I got to flatten out the curve. See, I'm used to talking to people who don't eat well, okay? Maybe that's just in Chicago. New Yorkers all eat well, is that right? Okay, in, in California, they eat a lot better than we do here. They eat trees and bushes all day long. I mean, you go out to get a good meal there, and they, all they got is salads. What is this? Give me some meat somewhere, somebody, please. All right. All right, so what can you eat? Trees and bushes. Um, my, my doctor once said to me, it's an old Bill Cosby joke. It's lost on most people. Uh, my doctor said to me once, I said, well, then what can I eat? Because he gives me this list, right, of things I can't eat. I, what can I eat? He said, I got news for you. If you put it in your mouth and it tastes good, spit it out. You can't have it. All right. Um, I'm going to skip this one. Does everybody know what the symptoms pretty much of diabetes are and, and poor circulation and that? Memory loss, blurred vision, toenail, we did this already. Um, if left unchecked, okay, what can happen? Well, all of those things that we talked about, plus cracked skin on your legs. What happens is when we get a lot of swelling in the legs, we start getting the skin starts getting really hard and tight. Have you seen that? hard and tight, and it starts to crack sometimes, starts to weep or break open, and eventually we get little bacteria in there. That's why we tell the diabetics what to do. What, 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 what do you tell about to do with their feet? Check them how often? Every day. And I tell my patients, and wash your feet every day. Do a little soap and water. It feels good. Keeps that bacteria down. Keeps the... Keeps the keeps the, the, all the different stuff that we don't want in there down, and it allows you to look at your feet to see, oh my goodness, I have a sore there. Now I've got to take care of it. But you know what? If you don't look at your feet, you're not going to find it. I can't tell you the number of patients. Uh, I've also done a lot of work with orthopedic uh, supports and, and diabetic shoes and um, so on. I pull the sock off. I don't want to sicken anybody here, but I pull the sock off and you've seen it, right? I can just tell by your face. You know what I'm going to say ahead of time, don't you? You bet. And here's this nasty, awful, weeping sores, nasty, smelly, god-awful stuff. They haven't, they haven't had their socks off in weeks, you know? And they are, they are covered with sores, okay? All right. And, of course, that's what happens. Gangrene sets in. And then what do we have? What do we have to start doing with the toes? Snipping them off, right, one by one, whittling away, inch by inch, piece by piece, and blindness. But, of course, that can't happen to me, because that's what your patients think, all right? Who gets neuropathy? We talked about this. People with poor circulation, this is the other thing. We didn't really talk about this much, but let's do it right now. Any peripheral arterial peripheral vascular disease, any I actually don't say all, I say any, chemo patient therapy, chemo patients. That stuff kills off blood vessels faster than you can imagine. Uh, and I'm sure some of you have already dealt with this. Patients uh, with a long-standing injury to an area, they've had a foot crushed or, or a work comp injury or a personal injury, um, and um, 
dialysis patients. We see, I, 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 just, I can tell you that virtually every dialysis patient I've ever talked to has some form or degree of neuropathy. And anyone who has been uh, sitting for a long period of time, sedentary behavior, you know, especially in these uh, nursing homes. You know, I've seen, been, done a lot of work in nursing homes and independent f care facilities. And, you know, the minute we put a patient in a wheelchair, they're going to start having stasis ulcers. They're going to start having some sort of decreased circulation. Uh, we did that already. Uh, we did that already. I, I actually ended up <laughs> blending a couple of things. Okay, so this is important. What happens if we don't take care of the neuropathy and get it under control? Because we have to, right? We have to get this thing under control. I tell patients and I tell you that you have to make your health care your top priority. How many times um, welcome ladies. How many times have we seen patients that say, well, I'm too busy to get to take care of myself. I have to take care of my family. Do we ever hear that from ladies, especially women, moms? Yeah, they're the most self-sacrificing. I know my mother was. They sacrifice their health. They sacrifice their life. They'll sacrifice their feet for their family. And I tell them, listen, you can't afford to do that. You cannot afford to neglect your health because soon you won't be here and you won't be able to take care of your family. Types of neuropathy, uh, best known and most commonly diabetes. We talked about that. Peripheral neuropathy, same thing, means away from the central of the heart, the toes and the fingers. Uh, let's see, here we go. Idiopathic neuropathy. This is the most common one. And I, and I argue with doctors all the time about this. Well, it's an idiopathic neuropathy, you know. We, we can't figure out what it is, so um, I'm not going to treat it because I can't figure out where it came from. I say, I don't care where it came from. It's there. Treat it. It needs to be treated. Yes? Any disagreement about that here, healthcare people? Okay. Uh, it's means of unknown origin, or we don't know where it came from, but you got it. Okay, polyneuropathy means many places in the body, okay, and an autonomic neuropathy. This is one that's really, really not known by many people, including a lot of physicians and, and uh, healthcare professionals. It means you've actually got dying off of nerves inside the body, and it can affect the internal origins, heart, stomach, bowel, and bladder. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Um, we did this already. Treatments. What are the standard treatments, by the way? Any of you do do any of this? No? What's the standard treatment? Medications? Mostly for pain, right? That's about all we can do. Uh, Neurontin sometimes. Um, you know, some of these other pain meds, you know, uh, even, and a lot of them, by the way, are, uh, are um, narcotic-based. Okay, so what's that do for our patients? That slows down the circulation even more, doesn't it? Okay, not good. Okay, uh, some for nerve damage. There isn't much, like I said. Uh, some of the some of the um, anti-seizure medications, uh, physical therapy for improved mobility and for increased blood flow. By the way, that's really good, and it is effective in some people. Okay, uh, one of the biggest things that you know you want to tell patients who have neuropathy is hey, walk. They can't. Right? I mean, if they're lucky to walk from here to the door without pain, you know? All right. Um, so, uh, standard procedures. Listen, um, the doctors say all the time, every, every, just, I, I'm seriously, just about 99% of the patients that we've ever talked to or looked for or looked at say the same thing. My doctors told me there was nothing they could do. Anybody ever hear that? Anybody ever hear that from their patients? Raise your hands. There's a prize later. Okay. There isn't really, but you know. Huh? Okay, don't tell anybody. Okay. Um, all right, so what I always ask people and patients, uh, what would your life be like if your neuropathy went away? Um, somebody here who has neuropathy, raise your hand. Anybody? 
What would, you, what would your life be like if it was gone? Would your life be better? Uh, what would it be worth to finally get rid of it? What could you do if it wasn't there anymore? You know, these are, to all those of us in the business, it's what we call activities of daily living, right? What activities would be better? Okay, we always say there's three levels of neuropathy, mild, moderate, and severe. Mild means it's recent onset, and mild, it, does, it bothers you, but it's not, it's, it, you know, you live with it. Moderate is it's been there more than a year, starting to affect your activities of home and, and recreation and the fun things that we want to do, right? Then severe is more than a year, usually two years or more, and it's incapacitating. And these are the, baby, these are the patients who come in on crutches, uh, on, with canes, with walkers, in wheelchairs. It's tough. It's, it's tough to see. But wouldn't it be wonderful if we could change that? You know one of the biggest fears that our seniors have? How many of you work with seniors? Nobody? That's about all I do now is work with seniors. Their biggest fear is being put into a nursing home because they know that that is the waiting room to heaven, right? God's waiting room. They know it, and they know that if they go in, they'll probably never come out, and that's a problem. All right, I always say could, you could stop worrying about, because it's not, it's not spoken. You know, it's whispered. You know, mom's going to have to go into the nursing home. We're going to have to put grandma in the nursing home. Why? Because she can't get around anymore. How many of you have been told that there's no help? There's nothing more to do. We can't fix neuropathy. You're going to have to learn to live with it. I hate it. Everybody hates it. You know, if we can send, it's old, if we can send a man to the moon or a, a, a probe to Mars now, if we can clone a sheep, which we've done, right? Why can't we get rid of neuropathy? Well, I want to tell you something. I got good news. You knew this was coming. The, there is a treatment, there is a cure, and there is relief available. The NeuroCare unit, the True Tesla NeuroCare, which is what we have here, a very, very simple device, lightweight, easy to use, easy to use for doctors, easy to use for nurses, easy to use for the patients. Now, listen, when we first started treating neuropathy in our clinic, uh, we didn't have this unit. We had some big $45,000 e-stem units. And I want to tell you something, they worked pretty good. When we got this, it wasn't but about three weeks, and all of our patients, we just used this on a few people, because we didn't know, we didn't know was it any good. It looked little. It didn't look powerful. We had these big units that looked powerful. But let me tell you something, every single patient that we treated with this, after the second treatment, refused to have any other treatment because it was that effective. Uh, we have a, a lady here tonight, I think, do we still have her? She's still here that's going to tell you about d what Dr. Harris told you about. You know, and, and we see this every day. We see it, and I'm on the phone every day with patients for the company, and we've sold thousands of these units throughout the country, and I can't tell you the number of patients that... Now, does everybody get well? Hello? Does everybody get well? No. Nothing's 100%, right? If I told you it was 100%, you wouldn't believe me anyway. And you'd think I was lying, and I would be. But let me tell you something. We have an extraordinarily high success rate. All right. It's a true Tesla muscle stimulant. It's the best kept secret in, the, in, the, in, the, in medicine. It's been around for actually for 20 years. But what's interesting is the guy that designed it, invented it, is kind of like a genius engineer, but he didn't know anything about marketing or sales. So uh, when we started working with it a couple of years ago, uh, Renewal Medical, they started getting this thing out and start getting it out to doctors and clinics and, and patients, and it really started to catch on. So now that's what we're doing full time. Uh, it's the most powerful unit that's ever been produced. It's engineered and produced here in the USA, no foreign hands. What does it do? What does it do? It provides a gentle 
painless deep muscle contraction. This is important. The deep muscle contraction, think about squeezing a sponge, gets the blood going. What we're doing is by contracting the muscles, we're increasing the blood flow, the blood velocity, the blood speed, the amount of blood going into the area, in the case of a leg or a foot, right? If we increase the blood flow, what are we increasing? Blood, oxygen, vitamins, nutrition, red cells, white cells, yes? What does that do to the area? It causes it to heal, doesn't it? Now, how many of you are familiar with things like TENS units? Okay, for pain management, right? Pain management units simply short circuit the pain fibers. But this causes an increased circulation so that we can pump good stuff in, and when we pump good stuff in, what goes out? Bad stuff. All the inflammation, all the infection, all of the waste products and the byproducts of neuropathy or wounds. Okay, we're going to show you something here in just a minute. Um, we actually found out that it proliferates approximately 300 to 500 percent more oxygen, red and white blood cells, and nutrition, which means more healing deeper into the dead and dying nerves and blood vessels than anything on the planet. And that's a bold statement. I stand behind it 100%. Our company stands behind it 100%. We've, we've, we've gone head to head with every expensive e-stem unit in the country, and some from foreign countries, and we have beaten them hands down, including, by the way, hyperbaric chambers. Hyperbaric chambers, oxygen chambers that force oxygen into the tissue from the outside. Yes? OK? But the problem is that there are already too much pressure in there. When we have a wound, oops, sorry, when we have a wound down here, when we have inflammation, edema, swelling, there's a lot of pressure in there. There's so much pressure in there that the regular pressure, blood pressure from the heart, which is already diminished by the time it gets down there anyway, can't get through the capillaries. The capillaries then collapse from the from the interstitial pressure and don't work. By increasing the flow, by increasing the velocity, we overcome that. It's simple matter of physics, or biophysics, if you'd rather. OK, so we got rid of all of that. It generates more healing. Now, remember we showed you some of these before with the black toes and the, the missing toes and the open sores? Two months later. Same feet, what do you see? No source, no open wood. Same feet, two months later. We did a study with 87 diabetic patients that were scheduled for amputation. 87. Out of the 87, we saved 80 feet. Not 100%, close. Ladies and gentlemen, there just isn't anything like this. I've been amazed. Everybody that sees it, everybody that uses it is amazed. How can something this wonderful, this powerful, well, somebody had to invent it sometime, right? Somebody had to figure it out sometime. We just happen to be the people. Um, this is what it looks like. It comes in a little handy carrying case. And if it can do it for that patient there, imagine what it can do for things that are already without sores, right? Okay, is it a tension? We talked about that. It's not. It doesn't mask the pain, but it causes a healing. It causes the body to heal itself. All it does is stimulate the blood flow. I mean, it's such a simple principle, it's, 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 it's silly. It's simply amazing. Now, a lot of people say to me, well, yeah, okay, but <laughs> what's the catch? Sounds too good to be true, right? Okay, well... How does it work? We talked about that. It forces out the edema, the swelling, and the infection, and generates more healing. But it does take time. Oh, you knew there was a catch somewhere. You thought that if we just w did one treatment, right, it would go away. Nothing goes away that fast. We talked about it a minute ago. That one foot that was so bad took two months to heal. That's phenomenal. You talk to any wound care specialist, any, any wound care people in here? No? You talk to any of them, they'll tell you that that's remarkable, absolutely remarkable. But it does take time. Uh, 
It heals damaged nerves and capillaries. Nerves, by the way, only heal at the rate of, if you'll remember your guidance physiology or something thereof, uh, one millimeter per month. That's it. How am I doing on time? I'm good. So what do we do about the remaining pain in the meantime? Pain relieving medication. This is important for you to know. While the patient is healing with the NeuroCare True Tesla unit, we'll talk about True Tesla in a second, uh, we have to do something with the pain. So we actually do uh, injections of Marcaine into the three or four major nerves of the feet. For a diabetic, this is nothing because we use a needle roughly the same size as a diabetic needle. Doesn't hurt because most of the people don't have any feeling down there anyway. And it's a very small amount. The Marcaine is the same thing that we kind of like the Novocaine that we use in teeth. And it gets rid of the pain temporarily five to eight hours at first, sometimes a day or so. But what it does is it not only gives the patient hope, but it shows them that there is, in fact, a relief. The lies that they've been told by the other healthcare professionals are just that, lies. Not lies so much as they just didn't know about this technique because it's relatively new. Uh, now, are we, can, Dr. Harris, are we going to be doing home health care with these? Okay, great. That's what I thought. Okay, so here's the key to the treatment. If we could give a patient a treatment in our, in our clinics, uh, or if you went to a clinic, three times a week is about right. The problem is that three times a week really isn't enough. It's a 45-minute treatment, and we're trying to increase circulation. But what if we could increase circulation twice a day for 45 minutes? A 45-minute treatment with this is roughly equivalent to a half hour's worth of walking. What would a half hour's worth of walking do for a patient that has bad circulation in their feet? Hello? Would it help? Absolutely. Okay, but they can't, we talked about this, they can't walk, can they? Not very well anyway, right? So, two treatments at home. Nice, easy, portable, on-off, easy to use. We talk them through it. They also get a little book that comes with it. Uh, and we will teach them how to use the device at home. Or you will teach them. Somebody will teach them. It's really easy. Uh, I do it all day long on the phone. I, we send these out to patients, and I talk to them on the phone. Here's how you hook it up. Here's how you turn it on. Here's how you, where you put the pads. The pads go real simply on the bottom of the foot and the outside of the leg. Real simple. Outside of the leg, bottom of the foot. Turn it up till they can feel it, and it starts contracting their muscles. And people will tell you, um, Larry, can, would you mind coming up here real quick and telling about your first treatment? Larry had his first treatment today. <laughs> um, and he's going to tell you real quick about how it feels, because a lot of people are afraid of it, that it's going to hurt. Larry, does it hurt? Not at all. Okay. At all. How okay. compared to other things? Uh, okay. Um, I was a cancer patient. I had chemotherapy and radiation. I've had neuropathy for about six or seven years now. And I've done every, I mean, I'm all sorts of drugs, every, all sorts of treatments. I'm standing close for the microphone. Oh, Go okay. Ahead. Go ahead. That's all right. Just talk to them. All right. Um, I've used TENS units before for injuries that I've had, and this was nothing like any TENS type of unit that I've ever had. Um, we did it on both feet. Uh, we worked on both feet, and uh, I was able to, we were able to crank it up higher to cause more contractions in my muscles, and uh, I was told that's what you're aiming at right. is pumping the blood through my, my, my legs and into my feet and um, I was able to crank it up higher without the sting, without the burning that comes with a TENS unit and um, we did 45 minutes on each side mm -hmm. and uh, that was earlier this afternoon and even now um, I feel much better and um, I was really I, I'm a skeptic, <laughs> which is one of the reasons why they brought me to get this done, and uh, I'm a believer. <laughs> Tell them about your knee. Oh, um, I've had five knee operations, three on my left and, uh, excuse me, three on my right and two on my left, 
and um, they, I was worried that my right leg was getting weaker, and uh, because it's acting up, and they hooked my knee up to the machine today, and um, that felt better also. Um, I don't think it's, you know, I don't know how long each treatment will last, um, but I'm bringing a unit home to work with it, and um, check back with me in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, yes. This is a real medical device. It's not a TENS unit, okay? And it's, you know, a TENS unit's like 50 or 100 bucks, okay? So how does it work? We already did that. Sorry. Um, we have a program that is unlike any other program from any other manufacturer anywhere in the world. Our program allows you as a practitioner or you as a patient to take one of these home essentially for free if you're working with one of our doctors. Now, if you have insurance and so on and so forth, that's a whole different story, but we want to let you know that the cost for doing this, if you're with our neuropathy program with the doctor here, tonight, if you want to take advantage of this as a patient or as a practitioner, I want you to talk to the doctor before you leave because it's the only time that you're going to get a chance to get one of these units for your problem or your patients. It's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Complete, you're going to get a complete, by the way, we're going to give you a complete comprehensive neurological examination we're going to explain the personalization treatment program, and it's going to, to help you reduce or eliminate your pain and restore your balance and gait and finally get back to, to living again. Okay? Does anybody think that that sounds like a pretty good idea? Have you ever heard of anything like that in your life? Okay? No. Okay. It is the best thing that you've ever seen. How can you get relief? Um, we've talked about this, but you can come into our clinic, doctor's clinic, I'm sorry. Used to be, you know, my clinic, I used to do this at home. Come into the clinic, and you're going to get an evaluation. Now, I don't know what doctor has. I know she has a special price for you, for those of you who are patients. I know there's a special price, but I don't know what it is. It's a, normally about a $250 evaluation. And that's going to be a complete neurological evaluation. It's going to evaluate your peripheral circulation. She's going to evaluate the condition, your history, and so on and so forth. And I know that she has. Doctor, do we have a price on that? I'm sorry. Yes. Michael? Doctor? $99 for the evaluation. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We charge in Chicago, but I know we're more expensive there. I have never seen anything so expensive as a downtown hotel in Manhattan. Oh my goodness. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. And I can't handle that. I mean, I thought Las Vegas was expensive. I thought London was expensive. Oh my goodness. Okay, anyway, that's beside the point. It's just because it's so cool down there. I know to you it's nothing to us foreigners. Downtown Manhattan. We call it downtown. You don't call it downtown. Chicago, it's downtown. Here, it's Manhattan, right? Do we have a spe other? No? Anyway, it's wonderful. My daughter and wife think when they're here, we don't come here very often, but every once in a while, come to see some shows. They think they've died and gone to heaven. Then I look around at the garbage on the street, and I go, not heaven. But that's beside <laughs> Oh, come on. That was pretty. Come on. You don't see garbage in Chicago on the streets. Of course, we don't have the shows, but. We, you know, okay. All right, so, Dr. Harris, I don't have your address. I was supposed to get it. She's going to come up and tell you what her address is, uh, and, and we're going to get you signed up. The thing is, the, the big question is, what have you got to lose? Those of you who are patients here, what do you have to lose? Except your pain. But you need to make a decision. You, you know, waiting for your neuropathy to get better isn't going to work. 
way, doing what you've been doing and expecting a different outcome, that's not going to work. Hoping that you won't get sores and open wounds and toes cut off, ladies and gentlemen, that's just silly because it's going to happen. I've seen it. Doctor's seen it. We've all seen it. Okay? Procrastination won't work. Or as we like to say in, in, in one of my favorite expressions is, I'm sorry, I keep touching the microphone, analysis paralysis will kill you. Because if you're paralyzed by analysis, you aren't never going to get nothing done. That's uh, Chicago speak for oops. Okay, so please, for your own sake, make your health care your top priority. Now, one of the side effects, the beneficial side effects of using this, if you were to, uh, if you were a diabetic and you were to go out and walk every day, 45 minutes a day, which is what I was told to do, and until I got really, really stupid or smart, I didn't do that. But once I started walking every day, I found that, oh, gee, amazing. My blood sugar went down. Isn't that amazing? Why? Because I'm asking my blood... My, my body cells to accept more of the sugar in, and it helps with the, the levels of insulin and so on. This does the same thing. This is the same thing as exercise because it's causing the muscle to contract and release every three seconds for 45 minutes, some 900 contractions in 45 minutes. Now, if you do that twice a day, as prescribed, okay, that's 1,800 contractions. That's a good workout. And that's going to activate those muscles. It's going to increase your blood flow. It's going to start absorbing and using the sugar. And the body is going to start managing the diabetes better. So what we find in most cases is that if the patient, we have to have the patient monitoring their blood sugar so that as the blood sugar begins to come down, and it does in most cases, not all, they can adjust or their medical doctor can adjust their medications accordingly.